former White House Press Secretary Ari Fleischer, Mara Liason, national political correspondent of National Public Radio, and Jason Riley, Wall Street Journal columnist and senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute. You know, we're just, just digesting this ABC interview, George Stephanopoulos with President Biden. We heard a bit of that there. We're going to play another soundbite in just a second. But Ari, to see the president come out today in the middle of what has been really three, four, five days of chaos in Kabul and give that a speech about booster shots and then walk out of the room as a former White House press secretary, what were your thoughts? You know, I always try to put myself in the shoes of why is the president doing what he's doing? He must have a good reason. And when you hear the tone in those snippets of his interview with George Stephanopoulos, he sounds so exasperated with the questions he's getting. He sounded that way at that July news conference, if you recall, where he said, why are you asking me questions? It's a three-day weekend. I don't want to talk about Afghanistan. You know, Joe Biden strikes me as one of these people who's been around so long, has seen it all, heard it all. He knows it all. And so when he says to the military, you're out, we're coming home, that's it. He doesn't want to hear all the complications, the other problems that will ensue as a result of it. He just says, I've heard all your excuses before, just bring them home. And I think that he's checked out. I think that's the only thing he was interested in, and that's why this has backfired so much. All right, we're going to play the extended uh, part of the first uh, clip of the interview we got from ABC, and then there's another part we've just brought in. Uh, Mara, take a listen to the, the longer first part. We've seen those hundreds of people packed into a C-17. We've seen Afghans falling. That was four days ago, five days ago. What did you think when you first saw those pictures? What I thought was we're, we have to gain control of this. We have to move this more quickly. We have to move in a way in which we can take control of that airport. And we did. So you don't think this could have been handled, this actually could have been handled better in any way? No mistakes? No, I, I, I don't think it could have been handled in a way that there, we, we're going to go back in hindsight and look, but the idea that somehow there's a way to have gotten out without chaos ensuing, I don't know how that happens. I don't know how that happened. So for you, that was always priced into the decision? Yes. Now, Mara, today the defense secretary said we do not have the capability to go out and collect Americans outside of the airport. They have to get there. Yet the State Department sent out the embassy alert uh, today that ended with the United States government cannot ensure safe passage to the Hamid Karzai International Airport right. and went on to say that they're asking the Taliban to ensure that safe passage. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the messages from the White House are so confusing. I mean, basically, the message from Biden today on ABC is it had to be this way. There was no alternative. And he seems to suggest, since he said it was priced in, that he knew it was going to happen. But then you have General Milley saying that there was no intelligence that suggested that the Afghan government and military would collapse in 11 days. You also have Joe Biden back on July 8th when he was asked, your own intelligence community has assessed that the Afghan government will likely collapse. He said that's not true. So was he blindsided? Was he not blindsided? It just, it, it, we can't get a, a kind of straight picture of what happened. Um, and to say that this was the only way things could have unfolded, I think is just not a good enough answer. Well, here's some more uh, answers, and I'll let you assess whether they're good enough or not. Another long clip from the ABC interview. Let's take a listen. And are you committed to making sure that the troops stay until every American who wants to be out yes. is out? Yes. How about our Afghan allies? We have about 80,000 people. Well, who, that's not the Is estimate. that too high? That's too high. How the many? estimate we're giving is somewhere between 50 and 65,000 folks total, counting their families. Does the commitment hold for them as well? The commitment holds to get everyone out that, in fact, we can get out and everyone that should come out. And that's the objective. That's what we're doing now. That's the path we're on, and I think we'll get there. So Americans should understand that troops might have to be there beyond August 31st. No, Americans should understand that we're going to try to get it done before August 31st. But if we don't, the troops if, will if stay. If we don't, we'll determine at the time who's left. And? And if, there are American force, if there's American citizens left, we're going to stay till we get them all out. We, we got there eventually, Jason, but um, what would you take from that? 
I, I, Brett, I, I think that the Taliban is lying to the U.S. government about its intentions, and I think the U.S. government, in terms of the Biden administration, is lying to the American people about uh, its hands being tied, uh, as, as Mara was just referring to. Um, there's no reason we should believe anything that the Taliban is telling us. As part of the Trump administration agreement, the Taliban was supposed to break ties with al-Qaeda. They have not done that, according to a UN report. As part of that same agreement, uh, they were supposed to enter peace negotiations with the Afghan government. As we can all see, they are taking over this country by force. The Biden administration has decided to turn Afghanistan over to some of the worst terrorists on the planet. And they are trying to present surrender as courageous, some act of courage, and I don't think the American people are buying it. But there is, there was a hunger, Ari, to get troops out, but how we got them out and what we did right. to get them out was the key part. There's some amazing video today coming out of Afghanistan of women, uh, mothers, handing over their children over the fence to try to get them into the airport, even though they know they can't get there. We didn't hear that, and there's some of that video right now, we didn't hear that empathy, that uh, emotion, at least not yet, from President Biden. And this is where he said that chaos was inevitable and he was clear-eyed about the chaos. Brad, he wasn't clear-eyed. He, he was two-faced. When he held that July news conference, he was asked, he said he had confidence in the Afghani military. He said that they were strong, 300,000, best equipment, best trained. Why didn't he say at that time, no, this will be chaotic? He didn't level with the American people. He took two totally different stands depending on what was happening on the ground in Afghanistan. And what's happening on the ground of Afghanistan is he blew it. Instead of having the proper sequence of withdrawal, which should have been civilians first, equipment second, troops last, he had troops come out first, which is why civilians are now endangered, our equipment has been captured, and the troops had to go back. He blew it. Last thing quickly, Mara, what do you think the long-term political impact of this moment, this week, is for this president? Well, I can say right now it doesn't look good because he's presiding over a debacle. But over time, I think it depends on what happens in Afghanistan. Does al-Qaeda get another safe haven? Do they launch attacks from there? What kind of images are we going to see about the treatment of women and girls? And, uh, you know, the American people sometime have a ver sometimes have a very short attention span. Uh, if Afghanistan settles down, maybe he won't suffer great damage. Right now, I think there's no other way to look at this than a bad thing politically for Biden. Right now. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.